All right, so we just had our first duel on the X Zero Festival. Um, I recorded it, uh, and I will be showing it after. Currently, we are in our second duel. Our opponent started with a set card, so um, I think we're gonna start with Lure of Darkness. See if he has an Ash Blossom or anything. Oh, he does not. Okay, so we banish, we normal summon, and we get a search. So we search for a circle. Opening of the spirit gates. I'm sorry, this is not circle. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. Maybe dark, dark magical circle from a dark magician, but I would doubt that. Um, all right, so let's add this to the hand. Um, we will use our second normal summon and tribute this for Raviel. Um, then we have to make sure to actually use our special summon now because now we have a legal target of the fiend monster in the graveyard, namely for this effect. You can pause and read it if you want to. Um, yep, discard, and we discard you, and we did, and we special summon itself. Basically, we don't interact with the card in the graveyard, um, but we do need it as a legal target. Okay, so now we can banish our chaos summoning beast. By the way, um, it's needless to say I'm playing the pure version of um, any deck, actually pure version, themed version, um, where I don't include like general staple cards, cards which don't every don't really interact with the deck too well, or don't synergize with the deck well. Um, so you will not see cards like Ash Blossom or uh, a Lightning Storm, Infinite Impermanence, uh, Called by the Grave, all those um, standard cards, I guess, um, you will not see. Um, not see me play, at least. Um, okay, so I'm thinking here what the best plan is. I'm a little bit debating because he might have a card which searches. He might have a card which he would like to the graveyard, so we can use this, Dimensional Fissure, but, um, uh, before the battle phase, basically. But if we do so, then we cannot... Use Dark Summoning Beast's effect in the second, uh, in the main phase too, basically. Um, and alternatively, we could use this first, but then we cannot use the battle phase anymore. Um, it says somewhere in its effect. I hope you found it before I did. Uh, Monster Control can attack for the rest of this turn. That's, that's basically it. Um, so yes, I'm um, debating a little bit. I think we will just uh, take a gamble and let him have his effect, which he wanted to resolve. Flip. The player with the lower to. What? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, he took damage as hell. Both players roll a six-sided die. The player with the lower result takes damage equal to the po their opponent's roll times 500. However, if the winner rolled a six, the loser takes 6,000 damage. Rolls are the same. Both players roll again. Oh my god, okay. Um, yeah, we can attack with you. Let's do so. <laughs> you never know. Maybe you uh, find out that he has a card or something. Um, my face too. Well, almost misclicked. Um, let's first of all use this, by the way. Um, special summon Hamon from the great, uh, deck. We can banish you just to add the card to the hand. Let's do so. I think it will be another, like the, the second of our Hamons. Um, we will obviously use Foolish Burial to get Cerulean Skyfire to the graveyard. Here you are. And we add you to the hand with Spirit Gates effect. <coughs> All right. Yep, add it to the hand. It's a spell negate uh, on a, basically, a, a, which doesn't chain. It's a, it's a negate which doesn't chain. Um, and activate you as well. That's about it. I'm, I wish the opponent really good luck to play through this. Let's see. Um, so yeah, it says, it basically says you can negate any spell trap effect activated by your opponent. That's it, basically. Like, uh, and of course it has a cost and everything um, after that. Um, but basically, uh, this, this doesn't chain. It's not like when a spell trap card is activated or something like that. It's uh, basically when the effect is going to resolve, you can negate that. So it's actually pretty uh, rare in decks. Like, uh, I don't think I know of another card. There probably are other cards which have a similar uh, requirement or activation um, of the card. But I can't think of any. Um, also, our, our opponent is not doing anything here. Um, it's likely because of deck lockdown. Either that because he has uh, perhaps has some card in his hand which he can do something with, plays on the field and actually add something to the hand or something, uh, but it doesn't work. And also a Dimensional Fissure. So if he has a card like, you can send this card to the graveyard to activate a certain effect, it's not going to work, Dimensional Fissure. And uh, common cards are obviously um, Ash Blossom and things like that. Uh, I don't think our opponent has uh, incredibly um, much defense here. Yeah, okay. So uh, I think that's uh, that's it. Well, Plash. All right, um, it's pretty cool actually because our first duel actually went pretty similar to how this one went. I'll show you in a bit, or right now actually. I also want to show the deck profile, but um, 
Uh, save to all nowheres. It's all good. Um, all right, yeah, so uh, we, we won our second duel as well. So we've been doing well so far. Let's go to the, it's here, right? Yeah, replay. Exhibition, awesome, um, let's play it. All right, so we actually flipped a coin, our opponent won here. Um, so he was able, or yeah, he was choosing whether to start or make us start. Um, and he chose to give us the first turn, so let's see what that will bring for us. We drew a decent hand. Um, we actually have like two searches here. Uh, Dark Summoning Beast uh, is like one of the... You, you, okay, wait, hold up. You need like two pieces, I guess, uh, to, start this, uh, to, to start this deck off, um, without any negates after that, of course. Um, and that one of the pieces is Dark Summoning Beast, and the other is... Um, this is a search, basically. Opening of Spirit Gates is a search for any of the other... Uh, cards that you need. Um, the same thing with Pure Rise Map, only Pure Rise Map is more general first of all, it doesn't matter in this deck because I played with teamed version and I don't play any other cards, um, which would fit this requirement. Um, but like uh, it has a wider um, scope, it can, uh, it, it, like it, this can also be used in a lot of other decks where obviously Spirit Gates cannot, um, if you play in the teamed Yu-Gi-Oh format. Um, but it has a steep cost of having your life points, so in this case that would mean paying 4,000 life points. But um, yeah, so we have three uh, pieces in the hand, actually. Uh, one is uh, Dark Summoning Beast, the other is Spirit Gate, and the last is Rice Map, Pure Rice Map, um, which of which Pure Rice Map is the most, the one with the highest downside, so we use that first to bait his Ash. He did Ash, so that's a good thing. Um, all right, awesome. Then um, we will obviously activate Spirit Gate because that will get us the search for our under, I guess it's called Combo Piece or something. It's Dark Beckoning Beast. He will start off the things for us. We add a card to the hand, it will be uh, Chaos Summoning. And then we have everything we need, actually. Um, we can use our additional normal summon for him. It's the first turn, so um, this monster allows us to not attack anymore this turn. But yeah, that's no, no biggie, of course. Um, all right. We, I hope you followed it, by the way. It's just a pretty standard um, way of playing this, uh, this deck. Um, so now that we have Fiend Monster in the graveyard, we could Special Summon Chaos Summoning Beast with Opening Spirit Gates effect. We um, already got this uh, Hamon on the field by uh, Dark Summoning Beast, this effect. Now we banished him from the graveyard to actually add uh, Raphael to the hand. Now that we have a Sacred Beast in the hand, we can use Chaos Summoning Beast effect. And then we banish Chaos Summoning Beast from the graveyard, also has an effect, to add the Field Spell to the hand. And this will actually go into much more, uh, more, much more usually because it allows us to draw two cards. Awesome. Um, yeah, that didn't add that much, but it did add a Foolish Barrier of Goods, which combined with Opening of the Spirit Gates um, can get us any continuous spell in the graveyard. Um, which uh, I chose to be deck locked down because, as you just saw in the second duel that we played, it's kind of confusing, but um, the duel that, st that we started this video off um, with, it's actually a really good lockdown. Like, not a lot of opponents can play through it. We also played um, Legacy of the Duelist, by the way. It's also a pretty good card. And then our opponent went and and face yeah okay exactly that's what he did okay so he like it, it took him some thinking in the real lifetime game so it's actually good that we're watching this back so you don't have to watch him wait wait <laughs> yeah you don't have to watch me wait i guess we are waiting and he is just uh making us wait ah, anyway um yeah victory so um that was our first duel and the duel that we started this video off with was our second duel um, and we already won two duels, so that's actually a good thing. I will show you the deck in between. I'll also, also show it at the end, I guess, um, of the video. Edit deck. Mm, Alright, so, but I hate that, that in certain videos you have to skip to the end of the video to watch the deck and then go back to where you were. So um, I'm just going to show you right now. This is the deck that I play with. Yeah, extra extra as well, yeah. Um, it's three of the main... Uh, combo pieces, uh, then we have searches for them, also three, so we have 15 starter cards, I guess, of which we need two. Um, usually different ones, it varies a little bit, but um, yeah, all right, that's it. And basically then we have two of the Sacred Beasts, uh, both two times, so f four cards in total. We don't play, I don't play Uria, I choose to not play with it, I think this is the strongest version of the Sacred Beast deck. Uh, we also, also d added Dark Diablos, which uh, goes really well with this deck because it actually tributes uh, dark monsters and everything. So it, it works really well with this uh, with this deck. Um, in addition to that, we also play Foolish Burial Goods. We play Allure of Darkness because we have... Um, this is 10 plus 3 is 13 dark monsters. Uh, one for one for our level 1 monster, which is Chaos Summoning Beast only. Um, then Foolish Burial Goods, you saw as uses. uses. Um, so that's actually a really good card as well to basically search a continuous spell in con combination with spirit gates. Uh, DDR, 
<clears throat> works pretty good because um, it actually is a revival from for these monsters, uh, Chaos Summoning Beast or Dark Summoning Beast, uh, because they both banish themselves from the graveyard anyway to use their effect. Um, then we have the field spell twice. I don't run it three times because that's a little bricky. You can always search it with Chaos Summoning Beast unless you get negated, of course, but like in other circumstances, if there's uh, no lock on you or no, no negate, then you can always search it with uh, Chaos Summoning Beast. So you don't want to draw this card, basically. If I could, uh, then I would run one, but running one and um, let's say that your opponent destroys your Fallen Paradise, then there's no way to get it back. At least in the version that I play it in, there's no way to get it back. So that's why I play two. Um, Dimensional Fissure is just one of the continuous spells that we choose from, uh, which you can include in the deck. Um, in con like I just said, like with Foolish Barrier Goods and Opening of Spirit Gates. So we choose Dimensional Fissure. I chose Deck Lockdown. I chose Legacy of the Duelist. Um, this also has like multiple effects. That's why it's pretty okay. And uh, that's why I use it. Um, <clears throat> and Cerulean Skyfire is definitely a must in my books. Of course, you if you play Hamon, this is uh, one of the strongest cards. I'm actually even debating right now while I'm looking at it to perhaps include two of uh, Cerulean Skyfire because it's so it's just incredibly good. Uh, Legacy of the Duelist is generally really good because it provides spell and trap card destruction, um, whereas we don't really have a lot of that in um, other other cases. Basically, I think I'm actually now that I'm looking at it, I think I'll take a DDR out and put in an, another Cerulean Skyfire. And I think we're fine like that. Also, in the extra zero festival, this is limited skill drain, but otherwise we would run three of skill drain. So, and only one of the awakening sacred beast. And perhaps then we would take Serena Skyfire out or something. So, um, but um, skill drain is actually really good in this deck because these uh, cards have effects which don't actually resolve face up on the field. But we our monsters have our sacred beasts have a have card effects which resolve on the field, but they don't matter that much. Like they're not really that good at, uh, that good of effects, and also. Um, uh, they're uh, as normal monsters uh, with 4000 and 4000 stats basically they're, they're incredibly good <clears throat> um, yeah so like I said these tribute themselves for their effects so they don't resolve on the field they resolve on the graveyard so they can freely resolve same thing with Darks Diablos if you tri uh, tribute himself for his own effect um, then he also resolves on the graveyard so this actually the searcher monster is the only monster that will resolve on the field, but yeah, you just obviously use this monster before you put your activate your skill drain. Okay, um, save. All right, I saved an extra server festival. That's not not really smart. Um, let me quickly do this. Always make a separate deck, uh, which is dedicated to your to your uh, deck slot and extra server festival, basically, or whatever festival is running. Because um, if you try to change it up, if you're gonna play with, uh, let's say. We're gonna play with um, Drytron or Blue Eyes or Cyberdark, something, right? Um, then we would lose this extra Zero Festival deck, which is saved here. <coughs> so always save it in a uh, separate deck slot, if you have the deck, deck slots, of course. But on which point, actually, uh, on which node, I guess? Um, I feel like they should really increase the deck size. This uh, wait, that means the deck amount, the number, number of decks that you can have. <coughs> because I would basically also like to build decks which. Of which I don't have all the cards yet, like uh, and and just keep as keep it as a progress or um, yeah progress deck as in as I unlock cards and I'll see what I have or perhaps which cards I'll need still and how close I am to completing the deck basically that that would be nice um, but currently I really can't uh, maybe because I in general really like deck building but okay all right we in this case we only drew one combo piece but we still have some plays luckily I'll show you if he doesn't have any. Uh, negates then I can hopefully show you but uh, the downside of this if he has a um, infinite impermanence or ash blossom or something for here it's going to be difficult he does not okay always add to the hand oh, always add to the hand opening of the spirit gates unless you have opening of spirit gates in your hand of course because you can only activate one of these um, activate it add to the hand chaos summoning beast that's because we have Hamon lord lord of striking thunder in the hand all right we normal summon <coughs> we tribute we special summon Hamon, Lord of Strike and Thunder. All right, then we also activate um, Lord of uh, Dark Diablos, I mean, because uh, a monster is tributed on the field, a dark monster. So, and we will use this um, right away, I think. Yeah, I think right away, because it shuffles it back into the deck, it doesn't um, allow him to do any, uh, any effects or something, um, pretty sure. So this is actually, um, you can tribute one dark monster, your opponent plays one card from the hand on either the top or bottom of the deck. So that's amazing. He's starting with one card less of his choice, obviously, but. All right, then we activate. Um, 
Uh, this tells us we can discard and special summon one of these. Um, just just pointing out like that would be a good one because if we we get special summon chaos summoning beast. Um, level one is link rebo. We can link rebo it right, uh, and then it would be in the graveyard, and then we can resolve from stepping here. But we don't play link rebo. We even in the team version basically and the original. Uh, apart from the festival, that's what I'm trying to say. Like I play team two yo if. Please, if you want to know more about it, read in the description, definitely. Um, but yeah, I just don't include general cards in the deck anyway. So, hmm, I think this is uh, basically the play that we can make. I was looking for a Foolish Burial Goods, because then we can get a Cerulean Skyfire on the field, but unfortunately that's not going to happen. We will put down Deck Lockdown, <coughs> and we will not activate this. Hmm, yeah, that's it. Um, end phase. All right, he has like uh, if if he has a lightning storm, for example, that that will already be really bad. So <clears throat> let's see what he has. Lightning storm will not destroy Hamon, by the way, because it's under protection by Fallen Paradise. But obviously, lightning storm can also uh, destroy all our spell traps. Okay, <clears throat> he's gonna special summon Dark Magician. Okay, I think uh, the Dark Magician deck actually does suffer from deck lockdown. Because uh, Magician's Rod, for example, uh, searches a card. Let's see. What can he do with his Dark Magician on the field? End phase. Okay, I'm glad to see that. Curse with his face down card is. Destined Rifles. Um, oh, that's not the card that we wanted. But let's see what we can draw. We. I would like to draw a Sacred Beast here, by the way. Okay, awesome. That's perfect. Um, because then we can, hmm, we can also use Dark Diablos his effect. And now that I'm saying that, yes, we will because he will re revive himself. You will see. Okay, he has to. I'm really curious what his face down card is. I'm so sad that we can't do anything about it. We don't have Cerulean Skyfire. If we did, then we could just um, activate it here, and we would have a negate for his spell trap. But we don't. Um, okay, we do this, we discard, we discard a continuous spell because we can actually add it to the hand. Alright, what does he have? Nope, nothing. Hmm, okay, in that case, we activate, tribute, and now you know, we tributed a monster for cost, um, but we tributed a monster, a, defeat, a dark monster, and that's why Dark Diablos is coming back. Dun, dun, dun. I'm really curious what he has face down. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah, let's try to attack. I think that's the best plan. We can also special summon again, um, get a summoning beast and uh, do some crazy plays. If you have extra deck monsters, then any monster on the field is good. But to us right now, these monsters on the field won't do any, won't help us basically. Okay, let's go to battle. Ready for response? Oh no. Did he? Battle phase. Okay, let's go. I am gonna attack with the yeah with this monster. Let's see. Flip. Ooh, that gives him four thousand five hundred. That's really good. Of course, I should have seen this coming. Nice. That's actually a really good one. Um, let's attack again. Mm -hmm. He. Uh, oh my God! He has another one. Well, there's an end to everything, my friend. At least I hope so. <laughs> okay, phew. Because I know that those monsters in the graveyard won't do, won't do him much good. Not that we are really happy about our dead monsters in the graveyard, but... Mm, yeah, I guess what we could do is um, discard you to the graveyard. Oh, he still has an effect, of course. Okay, so we do this. And we activate this effect because we haven't used that yet. Oh, no, 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 wait. You can banish this card from your... Also, monsters you control cannot attack for the rest of this turn. Oh, wait, hold up, what am I doing? Monsters cannot be special summoned from the deck, from the main deck. Yeah, <laughs> hold up, end phase. So, um, yeah, once this card leaves the field, I, it will be next turn. Yes, Eternal Soul, nice. That's actually pretty cool. Wow, this Dark Magician deck is giving us some troubles. I mean, the two apprentice solutions for him were so good, though. 
Okay, yeah, he's just gonna attack this monster and destroy it. That's a pity, so be it. Okay, let's see if his one card can save him, because I think if he lets us go, then next turn we will hopefully win at least. We just have to find a way to deal with his eternal soul, and that will destroy all cards he has. Oh, by the way, yeah, yeah, because it makes his Dark Magician unaffected. But we can still kill it by battle, so... Scratch normal summon, you can add one Magician Girl Monster from your deck to your hand. Oh, it's not gonna happen because of deck lockdown. Okay, interesting. I don't know why you summoned this monster. You could have done this with Dark Magician. Okay, I think if everything should... Or at least, let's try to kill him. Okay, that destroys itself. That's exactly what we wanted. We have in the graveyard these two. Okay, let's make our place. Dun, 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 dun. Wait, what effect does he have? Um, tribute to oh wait, I know what effect he has. Obviously, he has add one tower dark magic. That basically. Okay, normal summon. Add to the hand. Mm, I think this is the best card to add to the hand. Um, because we can add Raphael to the hand with another effect. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, we activate you. We, I'm kind of scared of this Allure of Darkness. <laughs> um, yeah, so we add to the hand you. I'm not making a mistake, nope. I just want to really not mess this up. <laughs> I don't think I will. It's, it shouldn't be that difficult, honestly. Normal summon. Okay, yes. We banish you. To add to the hand, Raviel, Lord of Phantasms. Okay. By the way, just pointing out that if he had a card in his hand, then we could use Darkest Diablos to tribute Dark Beckoning Beast, and we would have to place it on the top or bottom of his deck. So, even if he had a had kept this card, Barry Magician in the hand, we still would have won. <clears throat> or whatever he would would have drawn if it was like a. No, I mean, not whatever. Obviously, he could have uh, some kind of hand trap, which he could not activate. Um, he could activate before we could choose Dark Diablos effect, right? Okay, so we draw two cards. Uh, no, we don't want to chain. Just to see what we... Like, this will give us a lot of follow-up plays. You can see Lurf Darkness with this. For this burial, we can send a lot to the graveyard that, that we would like, but um, there's no need because we can just do... Attack. And let's attack you first. Wait, 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 wait. When your opponent activates a card, of Tarsus... You can change this card, and if you do, special summon one magician girl monster from your deck. Did I read correctly? Oh no, I think I misread. I should have tributed Dark Diablos. Ouch. He's also allowed to special summon hit that back. Um, Let's do this. Yeah, he's gonna negate or basically change the battle position. But I'm oh, I'm actually curious. I want I want to find out if we can special if we can attack uh, another monster as well with Lord Fan, a Lord of Phantasms. Uh, continue to attack. Yep. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, we can just attack the other monster as well. Then we will have uh, Lord of Phantasms left for his uh, his monster. He will special summon Dark Magician again here. Oh no, he will. Oh, he can special summon it during the damage step. Yeah, that's smart. Oh, amazing. Okay, I should have made better plays. I should have. I could have insta killed him because uh, Raviel, Lord of Phantasms, would just tribute tribute Dark Diablos. Um, yep. Destroy it anyway. Uh, Dark Diablos, and it would have seven thousand, and then we would double it, fourteen thousand, and his attack position, uh, Dark Magician, would have would have been uh, too much, or at least it couldn't take it. So let's see. We have. Oh, we have this. That's good. Um, let's do that. Add it to the hand. We. Oh my god, we still have so many plays, guys. Um, we banish you. We have Cerulean Skyfire. That's actually really good. Um, Okay, let's send something to the graveyard, and I think it will be you. Because now we can um, 
send yeah discard one card let's send discard uh, cerulean skyfire we will add it to the hand in a second um we special summon dark summoning beast you could have done this differently as well by the way by not banishing um not banishing take care summoning beast um with alert of darkness but this actually I, I like this like um I, i'm glad that we're able to show what the sacred beast deck can do okay uh, add one to the hand we will add to the hand Serena skyfire oh is this not one once per turn please Yes, it isn't. Okay, I should have known this. Um, yeah, then we add to the hand deck lockdown, and I think that's uh, that's about it for him. We still have this, by the way. Um, oh yeah, not anymore because of deck lockdown. But we can we can banish um, chaos summoning beast from the graveyard to add a fallen paradise to the hand. We could have just done that because you would like to thin out your deck, right? We don't want to draw fallen paradise in the next turn. <clears throat> but yeah, he's not gonna do much, I think. You can just special summon um, Dark Magician. Ooh, Magician. <laughs> That's actually, that adds an Eternal Soul, or sets an Eternal Soul. Oh, buddy. He, does it set it directly from the deck? Yeah, it sets it directly from the deck. So I guess, I guess we could negate that, but it really doesn't do anything for us. The Magician Salvation also has, oh, another effect with Dark Magician Girl. Oh, that's actually really good. Nice. Um, yeah, no, then we will negate this, of course. Yep. Because otherwise he would be able to special some Dark Magician uh, and then Dark Magician Girl as well because of Salvation's effect. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, he gave up. Yeah, okay. I figured. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, we showed how to win in even another way with the Sacred Beast deck. I think the Sacred Beast deck is in general just really good. Uh, it rocks in our team format because um, yeah, it's, it just has a really good strong cards also it's lucky to be able to synergize with um, continuous spells and traps traps we don't use that much but um, continuous spells mainly um, because of its synergy it has like a wide variety of cards that you could use it's actually less there, like there are not that many continuous spells which are actually good you you'd be surprised it sounds like there will be always a good card in between them but um yeah regardless it has more options than uh, some other decks sometimes um Okay, so yeah, that was actually the first three duels. I think that's where I'll be ending this uh, video. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I will actually, like I said, I will close off with the deck, um, edit deck. <clears throat> and you will see what the deck's like. I won't go through every card every, uh, again. But um, yeah, you, you know this deck. So you probably are familiar with these cards if you've seen the video. So here, 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 here. These, 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 and ending with Awakening of the Sacred Beast. Awesome. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in another video. Peace out.